Hey there crafty friends, my name is Misty. Welcome or welcome back to my channel, Gleesman Designs. In today's video, we are doing some more spring decor DIYs, so let's get crafting. For this DIY, I'll be using six of these Dollar Tree candle holders. Technically, we only need three for right now. They are really nice. They have a concrete bottom to them and then these wire kind of metal wire tops. Dollar Tree also does carry these in a few different shapes as well. You will also need these chopping mats from Dollar Tree. They come at two in a pack and you want to make sure that you get the kind of see-through ones. They're not completely see-through. They almost look like frosted glass, which I really like, but they do also have white ones that are not see-through. So make sure you get the see-through ones. When I say that these lanterns are so easy to make, I'm not even joking. All you're going to do is roll the cutting mat up into a tube and then you can put it down inside the candle holder and let it go and it will pretty much form itself the shape that it needs and size that it needs to be and you will see it kind of goes right down into the side between the metal piece and the bottom base and it just fits in there absolutely perfect. I did add a very teeny tiny little dab of hot glue up here at the top just to hold the cutting mat in place for now. Now take another one of the tops to the candle holders and slide it down over the cutting mat so that it is right on top of the previous one. You can place it on to where that the lines are matching up or you can have them going to where that they are turned different directions. Once you have the second one on, grab the third top of the candle holder and place it sliding it down over the cutting mat just like you did the first and second one. And again, once you have all three of them on, you can place the bars going however you would like. There will be a tiny little bit of the cutting mat sticking out from the top. I just took a pencil, traced around it, and then pulled the cutting mat right out from where it is inside of the candle holders. It is super simple to get it in and out. And I, again, only put a little dab of that hot glue because I knew I was going to need to pull it apart in order to cut it. But you also only want to add a little bit of hot glue so that you don't see a bunch of hot glue because, again, these cutting mats are see-through. Once I had the cutting mat pulled out of the candle holder, I'm going to just use my scissors and cut along that line that I just drew so that the cutting mat is the perfect size that we need. After I've cut off the excess of the top of the cutting mat, I put it back into that tube shape and place it right back down inside my candle holder. After I had the cutting mat slid back down into its position, I'm using my glue gun and adding a little dab of hot glue down at the bottom as well as up at the top and gluing the cutting mat together. It is literally that simple. You really don't even have to glue the cutting mat together if you don't want to. And this first lantern is done. For these lanterns, I want to make them a set of three and I want them to be small, medium, and large. So for each one of the lanterns, I use one less of those gold metal pieces on the candle holders. So for the second lantern, I take the cutting mat and roll it up, place it down inside one of the candle holders, and then place a second candle holder metal piece on top of that. And I got a little bit smarter here and just used a little Dollar Tree clip to hold the cutting mat in place while I traced off what I needed to cut. Okay, I said that completely wrong. I traced what I needed to cut off. There we go. And again, it's really easy just to pull the cutting mat right back out, cut off what you need to cut, and then you can roll it back up and place it right back down inside of the candle holder. I apologize if it feels like I'm zooming right through this DIY, but it is super repetitive and I don't like to make you guys watch anything repetitive. You all know that if you watch my channel, so I'm just trying to get through it, but make sure I show you guys the important parts. So once you've added the cutting mat back down inside, you can add the second gold metal piece. Again, we're only using two this time, and then you can glue the cutting mat together. And now the second candle holder is done and you can move on to the third. You'll need the little bit of the cutting mat that you cut off of the second lantern and you'll place it down inside one of these candle holders from Dollar Tree. And again, trace off any excess, cut it off and place it back down inside and glue the cutting mat together once it fits perfectly. 
And that is it. Now you have three absolutely beautiful lanterns or candle holders. Unfortunately, I did not have three of the same candles that were different sizes, but that was okay because I actually changed out the candles for fairy lights and oh my goodness. I was blown away as soon as I turned them on. I think this is so stunning. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think of these candles and if you like the candles or the fairy lights better. This next DIY is actually a DIY I just made for my home and wasn't even going to put into a video, but it turned out so beautiful I absolutely had to show you guys. I'm using one of these Dollar Tree birds and then painting it with this bare chalk paint linen white spray paint. I have noticed lately that these gold birds are super trending and I think they are really beautiful, so I decided I'm not paying that outrageous price, I'm just going to make my own. So I have watched Sammy from Unicorn Dust Design use Rub and Buff so many times and each time I watch her use it, I want to use it more and more. So I went on Amazon and ordered a pack of four different colors and first I'm going to start with the color Gold Leaf and I use my finger and start rubbing it wherever I would like it to be on the bird. At first I wasn't sure if I wanted it completely covered or just a little bit of white showing, but absolutely gorgeous, hands down. I was amazed. The more I rubbed this, look at that. Like, how gorgeous is that? I just don't even understand how this stuff works the way it does. It is so stunning. And as you can see, I loved the color and how it was turning out so much. I just kept going and going. Then I decided I wanted to add the color antique gold. So I started adding some of that and going back and forth between the colors so that when you're looking at the bird and you are moving, the color kind of changes on you and tricks your eyes to make it look like the color is changing. And oh, I, I'm sorry you guys, I know I keep saying it, but I love this little bird. If you guys would like to check out this rub and buff, I will have it linked down below in the description box. But just be warned, once you start doing it, it's going to be hard to stop. As you can see, I rubbed and buffed the entire bird and here's how it turned out. For this DIY, I'll be using one of these newer Dollar Tree round signs. These are the ones with the bead hanger. Now we are going to take some scissors and simply snip that right off. Once I had the hanger removed, I flip it back over to the front and take some Dollar Tree spackling and just fill in these three cracks that are on this white part going around the sign. Dollar Tree carries packs of these half pearl looking dots. They are on a sticky like adhesive strip. Now they do also have them in several colors as well. The color that you use really does not matter because we will be painting them. When attaching the strips to the outside edge of the sign or our soon to be tray or cloche, I'm going to be adding some hot glue along with that adhesive backing if you've watched my channel for any amount of time, you definitely know that if there's any adhesive backing and I'm using it in home decor, then I'm going to be adding some type of glue along with it, especially if it is for a home decor piece that you're going to be handling a little bit more like a tray or cloche. I just kept adding the strips of half pearls going one after another all the way around the sign. Using the Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the color Linen White and a sponge brush, I go around those half pearl strips as well as giving that white ring that is on the sign a fresh coat of paint as well. 
I have been wanting to do this for quite some time now. I got this pack of gold leaf off of Amazon. It came with so many sheets of gold leaf and it was a great price. I will have the link down below in the description box if you would like to check it out. And let me just say, I loved using this product. I am not affiliated or anything like that but it is just so much fun to use. And not only is it fun, but it is super satisfying for whatever reason, and it is also so gorgeous once you are finished. Now for my project, I will be using Mod Podge to gold leaf with because, well, I'm sticking to Dollar Tree and also because most of us already have Mod Podge. Now I do believe there is a medium that you can use like that is more made just for gold leafing. However, in my opinion, it is pretty much Mod Podge, so we are using Mod Podge. All I did was add a little bit of Mod Podge where I would like the gold leaf to stick, and then I place little pieces of the gold leaf on those spots, tapping it down lightly with my finger, or sometimes I will use the back of my paintbrush, and you're just going to keep adding the Mod Podge and sticking those pieces down. Now you can try and cut them into strips, but this stuff falls apart quite easily. So it is just easier to rip it up into pieces and then individually place them on. Now, for those of you who have never heard of gold leafing, it really is a simple concept. All this gold leaf is going to stick to is your glue. So no matter what glue you're using, whether it be Mod Podge or a different medium, it is only going to stick where you put the glue. So just make sure the glue is where you would like only the gold leaf to be and you are golden. Did anybody catch that? Gold leaf, golden, gold, no? Okay, anyways, you're just going to, after you have all the gold leaf going completely around, take a 100% clean and dry bristled brush and start going in a circular motion to knock off any excess gold leaf. And as you are knocking it off, you will see what I mean by how the gold leaf will only stick to where you added your glue, and I just think that is so neat. Once all the excess gold leaf was removed from around the edge, I'm going to be turning this sign into a tray by using this candle holder slash stand that I got from Dollar Tree. Now before I start gluing anything together, I am going to add a little bit more gold leaf. I do want to add some around the top edge of the candle holder, as well as down on the bottom part of the candle holder. And oh my goodness, I cannot wait for you guys to see how this turned out. Because this is repetitive, I'm not going to make you watch a bunch of it, but I do want to just show you, you can see that I take some of the pieces and I crinkle them in between my fingers before adding them because I like the texture and you don't really get that much tex texture if it is just super flat. So I would take some of the pieces and just crinkle them between my fingers before applying them. Once I had the gold leaf going all the way around, I knocked off the excess and started adding Mod Podge down at the bottom. So I added some Mod Podge wider down here closer towards the bottom and made it going skinnier as it went up. Then you will add your pieces of gold leaf and I wanted to show you guys up close what it looked like when you had the gold leaf on there and you had not wiped off any of the excess. And here is what it looks like after you take a clean brush and wipe off any excess and it only sticks to where the Mod Podge was placed. Look how gorgeous. Next, I'm going to take the round sign and glue it to the top of the candlestick holder to turn it into our tray. And to do that, I was going to use some all-purpose glue that I got from Dollar Tree along with hot glue, but I was not able to get any out and I thought I was going to. So I just used my Gorilla Glue hot glue sticks and I will have those linked down below in the description box. They are great and super strong. Once you have that top glued on, this part of the DIY where it is just a tray is done and I am so obsessed with how it turned out. But be sure to stick around so you can see how we turn this tray into a cloche. Oh my goodness, I am so in love with this. It is so beautiful. It's giving me this shabby, chic, classy vibe. I really love how this DIY turned out.
So now let's turn that stunning tray into an absolutely stunning cloche by using one of these Dollar Tree Bell cloches. They're actually for plants, but we are going to use it for home decor. And let me just say, no one is ever going to know that this was made from something that you would use for plants. Now, because these are made for plants, they do have these black vent pieces up here at the top. They are very, very easy to pop off. And once you do pop them off, you will see that there is holes for ventilation, but don't worry, we will be covering those up. You are also going to want to remove the sticker that's on the cloche. And if you have any sticky residue left over, Dollar Tree carries Goo Gone, add some on a paper towel, wipe it off and it comes off super, super quick and easy. Once all the sticky residue was off of the cloche, I wanted to cover up the holes that's on the top. So I'm going to be using the lid to this little trinket jar that I found at Dollar Tree. It is glass and I used some white Rust-Oleum spray paint to spray paint it white. Once the spray paint on the lid was dry, I placed it on top of the cloche, making sure that it covers those holes completely. You do not want to see them at all. And again, this thing fits so perfect covering those holes. Then I just take a pencil and trace around that circle so I know where I need to cut it out. Last year around Easter time, I created this cloche here using a plastic lid to a plastic jar from Dollar Tree. And this cloche also lit up, so if you'd like to check that video out, the link will be in the right hand corner. Once I had that circle traced out for the lid, I used my hot knife, which I will have linked down below in the description box. It is a great tool to have in your craft room. You can use it for so many different things. I went around that circle and removed that piece from the top of the cloche. And as you can see, our little trinket jar lid fits absolutely perfect. This lip here fits right down inside of it. So I added some hot glue around the inside of the lip and well, technically the outside of the lip and placed it on top of my cloche. I also did add some hot glue on the inside where the lid is just for some extra security. I want the top part of the cloche to match the bottom of the cloche and also because I want a gold leaf more because it again is super fun. So I'm going to place some Mod Podge on the top part around the area where I glued the top jar to the top of the cloche. And this also helps make it so that you don't see any seam or any hot glue and it just turns out really pretty. I also did decide to take some of that gold leaf and place it in the center of the very tippy top of the top part of the cloche. While I was letting the Mod Podge for the gold leaf dry, I took my scissors and went around the very bottom part of the cloche because it does have a little bit of a lip and I just wanted it to be a little bit smaller. So I used my scissors and went completely around cutting a little bit of that bottom part off. Then once the Mod Podge was dry, I wiped off the excess gold leaf and placed my cloche on top of the tray and look how stunning. For this DIY, I'm going to be using one of these really neat new signs from Dollar Tree, and I actually love this sign just the way it is, so we are going to leave it just like that and use some of these Dollar Tree craft decals. I love the words on them and the fact that they are double-sided, so I'm going to be using the word blessed as well as the word thankful, and what I do is just pull them out, and I'm going to leave them on the backing, but cut the word out as close to the word that I can actually get it, so that basically I can put it onto my sign and know where I'm going to be putting it and placing it before I actually place the sticker down. So I take my scissors and cut out the thankful and the blessed and as you can see I just place them onto the sign so that I know where I want to put them and then I start peeling the sticker stickers off. These are very very flimsy and thin so just be careful and I start placing the thankful down where I would like it on the sign. Mm -hmm. 
Then once I have the thankful wear I want it, I take the blessed sticker and I do the exact same thing, placing it onto the sign where I would like it to be. I want this sign to say thankful and blessed, so I wanted a really small little and sign in the center in between thankful and blessed. So these black Dollar Tree stickers were absolutely perfect and they had the little and symbol down at the bottom. So I just took it off and placed it right in the center of the thankful and the blessed. Now for video purposes and also because this will be in my own home, I did not put any Mod Podge over top but I do recommend you add some Mod Podge over top of all the words and here's how this sign turned out. For this DIY, I'm using one of these new Dollar Tree bead wreaths. However, this one I did paint with the rust -Oleum spray paint in the color Linen White. Now, you guys didn't think we were done with a gold leaf, right? Because, like I said, I was addicted to putting this on everything once I started. So, I decided to add some gold leaf onto the white beads. And I'm so glad that I did because it is it just gives it this such a beautiful high-end look and it is just so glamorous and gorgeous. Now, because we've gone over this like 18,000 times, I'm going to do this very, very quickly. Again, we're going to add some Mod Podge onto the beads, and I just do that here and there sporadically. I don't want to completely cover the beads. I do want a lot of the white to still show through. So I just start taking some of the Mod Podge on my paintbrush, add it onto the beads here and there, and then add some of the pieces of gold leaf wherever I see fit. And as always, you can add as little or as much gold leaf as you would like. You can completely skip the gold leaf in this DIY and still do the wreath because again, it just turns out super beautiful and I am so excited for you guys to see this DIY as well. Just keep going around the bead wreath form, placing down Mod Podge and adding the gold leaf until you have the amount that you would like. Once I had the amount of gold leaf to my personal liking, I then go back around with a bristled paintbrush and knock off all the excess gold leaf just like we did in all the previous DIYs. And don't forget to keep in mind that the gold leaf is only going to stick where you actually put the Mod Podge on the beads. Once I had all the excess gold leaf knocked off, I had to get really close so you guys can see how absolutely gorgeous this is turning out. The bead wreath form is done and I set it aside so I can start working on the flower that I'm going to be putting in the center of the greenery. And again, we are not done with that gold leaf. We're going to be putting some gold tips on some of the petals of this flower. So the first thing I need to do is completely take it apart. I do end up using two of these flowers instead of three and I'm so sorry I do not know exactly the name of these flowers but I do know that they are from Dollar Tree. I will only be putting the gold leaf on one of the flowers out of the two flowers that I am going to be taking apart. This flower that I first took apart is the one I'm going to be adding the gold leaf to so all I do is take a little bit of Mod Podge and add it just on the tips of the petals and then add those pieces of gold leaf again just like we did the previous DIYs. You could add the gold leaf onto larger portions of the petals if you would like. However, again, I just wanted to do the tips because I thought that would be really pretty and also nice and subtle. I repeated that step adding the gold leaf to the petals onto all of the flower pieces again to one of the flowers. Then I'm going to knock off all of the excess with that paintbrush once again. I had to get up close again and show you guys, look how stunning this side is where I've knocked off the gold leaf already. This side over here I haven't, but the other side is just so pretty. Once I had all the excess gold leaf knocked off, I wanted to add in another flower exactly the same type so that it didn't seem like there was too much gold leaf. So what I did is I took apart a second flower and then I'm just going to place one where it has the gold leaf on the petals like on the back and then I'm going to place one that doesn't have the gold leaf on the petals in front of it and then one with one without one with one without so on and so forth basically just putting the two flowers together creating one 
larger and fuller flower. I do apologize if my voice keeps going in and out and cracking. I am not feeling very well lately, so that is just something I have to deal with, but I want to get you guys out these beautiful DIYs, so we're just dealing with it here, but hopefully I feel better soon. I did think the center of the flower looked a little bit too plain for me, so I add a little bit of Mod Podge and a few pieces of the gold leaf onto the center of the flower as well. Now that my flower is all put back together and my stem is back on, I can go ahead and start picking out my other florals and for that I'm going to be using this garland that used to be on my desk like this one up here, but I'm going to be using it for this DIY instead. This garland is a lamb's ear garland that I got off of Amazon a few years back, so if I can get the link for it, I will have it linked down below in the description box. If I cannot find this exact one, I will have a similar one linked down below as well. I first cut off one larger piece, then cut off one piece a little bit larger than the other piece so that I had two separate pieces. When adding your florals, keep in mind that the clasp for the top of this bead garland is up here right at the top, so make sure you have that at the top when placing your florals on. You could of course use whatever you would like to attach your greenery and florals. I will be using some Dollar Tree floral wire. I personally like using the Dollar Tree floral wire when adding the florals to a bead wreath simply because you can really get the floral wire in between those beads a lot more than you would anything else. Once I had the top piece of the lamb's ear secured onto my wreath, then I start going in and deciding what florals I would like to add with my beautiful gold flower. Well, to me, hydrangeas go with just about any flower, and I really love these farmhouse hydrangea bushes. This color is really pretty, so I decided it would go absolutely gorgeous on this wreath. If you have not picked you up a pair of these new garden shears from Dollar Tree to cut your florals, you are totally missing out because these things are a lifesaver and definitely work so well with florals. When working with a bead wreath form, I like to bend the head part of my florals so that I can actually place the stem along the side of the beads and not technically on top of the bead wreath form. If that makes sense, you'll kind of see a little bit more about what I mean here in just a moment, but what I do is I take a little bundle of about three of the hydrangea pieces and then I'm going to take some floral wire and just make those into a little bundle and then I can take that bundle using those two pieces of the floral wire that I created the bundle with to just fasten them and secure them onto and around the beads on the wreath form. Now that I have this first set of three hydrangeas in place, I can start going in and adding that really pretty flower with the gold leaf on the tips. So I just decided I wanted to remove the green leaves on here and just go with the flower. So I removed that and again made sure my flower was bent facing forward. And then as you can see, I do take some floral wire and here's where you can see I placed the stem alongside the beads, not in front of them. And then I take the floral wire and make sure that the flower is nice and secure to the actual wreath form. Now that that gold flower is on, we can go through the next few steps a little quicker. So we're going to take the next three hydrangea pieces and we're going to bend those as well and then add those onto the wreath form again by using some of the Dollar Tree floral wire. Then after I had all the hydrangeas nice and secure onto my wreath, I can go ahead and add the bottom part of the greenery, which all I am going to do again is take it, place it underneath the where the hydrangeas are, and then I'm going to again add some Dollar Tree floral wire to make sure it is attached to the wreath form. Now I thought once I had my greenery on, I would be done with this project, but of course I had to go one step further and I wanted to add a little bit more of a white touch so I decided to go with some Dollar Tree Baby Breath. Now, if I had a better quality Baby Breath, I probably would have added a little bit more, but I really don't care for the Dollar Tree Baby Breath that much, but I do think it looked really pretty with this project. So I just pulled off a few pieces of the Dollar Tree Baby Breath off of the pick, and I just hot glued them on either side, back behind the flower with the gold leaf, 
and I truly love how it really pulled all of the colors together and again I love this project please let me know what you guys think down in the comments Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more DIY inspiration. I hope to see you all and a few new friends on the next one. Bye.